How much much, Tenchi? It's time to do the little shooting gallery event. It'll be interesting. Mm. <coughs> Shouldn't take all that long, but I also got to do my dailies too. All right. So some stuff from the mail real quick. Let's get. Yeah, just two adventures experiences for the day. Okay, cool. Well, all right. Right here. The only thing... This is also theater, but I'll do that again. I'll do that next patch. Hmm, very unusual device. Meet again cannon. It's interesting because we've got... <coughs> another version of the blade dance event from Valorium Mirage. Got another version of... The Finch Ball will be next patch. We have the Cannon one right now. So... Just gotta go to the Mushrooms. Around, and then we have our stuff. Let's just see something real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Shouldn't take all that long. Got this nice purple. The end. If <clears throat> the interesting thing is that Emily's going to be second half of the patch cycle, which means got more time to save up for her. But to be fair, that means not long. We'll be immediately after. The crazy thing this is just two five stars in the first patch, which is making it kind of like Inazuma, which is interesting. Is what it is. So, we can just move our way down, see how this works. Okay. Measure of a mushroom. Okay. <clears throat> it is interesting, though, that apparently... Oh, really? You're kidding. How'd that happen? Apparently, there are only two male characters planned right now according to some of the beta stuff some of the weak stuff which is interesting to say the least because to be fair there are also things like Capitano probably coming out but at the very same time it's still because <clears throat> Inazuma didn't get well to be fair I guess you'd have to count Kaza in the way too which it's going to be interesting to think the ratio is going to end up being because it might have been a long way between Kaze and then Ito and Goro, but you also have Toma, though he was four star, and Kaze was also just the first, which is not meaningless. <sighs> well, okay. Cool, and. Thanks. Cool, and. Cool. Mmm. <clears throat> Just gotta see how many we can take down and... Oh, okay, alright. Thanks, thanks, and... Can we dodge out of the way that... Oh, how did that hit me? And I got stuck on the little thing in the middle. This is also just amazing. Hmm. Couple of things of meat. The last one is going to be... Fixing that flower. Okay, cool. <clears throat> oh, hello! How are you doing, Setsu? I assume you saw the new trailers? What do you think? The movement abilities look very, very interesting, but I'm wondering what the cooldowns are going to be like. Are we done? Aren't growing well? It's bothering you? Here to buy herbs? Yeah, I just gotta do this real quick. Yeah, I'm just doing my dailies real quick before doing the canon event, because I get a, didn't get a... Yeah, what are your thoughts? The rose is growing slowly, soil pest problem, and pest control, and fertilizer, horror fruit, okay, cool. That's all. Come on, come on, a lot of special fertilizer, reserves, horror fruit, yeah, there we go, and we can just submit it. Hello, how are you doing? Oh! Oh, right, because you, you haven't come back yet. Yeah, yeah, well, it is interesting, because based on the preview we initially saw, it seems more like a morph than a mount, and given how the... 
other gimmicks have worked and other reasons, they'll probably be limited to not one kind of like sigils or limited to Samaru, underwater in general, is limited to Fontaine. But given that some people say that not one is going to be really, really big, that might be crucial. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's really, really hot out. I get hot where I am, but not that bad. I It's been a long time since I lived in California, but I did not live in LA, which was important for me not just sweating to death. I've never really been good with hot temperatures. How are you doing? Oh, oh, wait, wasn't it Los Angeles? Oh, have you been traveling around? Oh, also, that's right. Cali was chilly? Hey, that rhymes. Okay, so I got five quick things to do with normal banner. Because we got five free ones this month, so that'll take me to ten. Oh, Ari oh, because you were going through Arizona to to get back, or because it was a stop on the way back. That is technically the reason I've quote unquote been to Las Vegas. I've been through the Las Vegas airport, but well, I don't think we're getting anything here. Can't imagine. But you know. And work our way back up to South Pity gradually. The last time I just got a Kutching Con, which isn't bad. Oh, nice. That. I, like I said, maybe if I got meaningfully larger, I could do some kind of fan meet. Who knows? But there'd be some logistics and anonymity and stuff. And also, it's just so hot there. You know how it is. But now that dailies are done, I can do. Engineer tinkering with a very unusual device. Well, if it happens, I'll consider it. We'll see. But yeah, exactly. I could set up a set up an iPad with a screen, and you can just be the one carrying it around or something. You'll exploit my fans for free labor. Incredibly ethical, right? But how was how was the trip? Fight happening nearby? No, oh, here's our engineer. In that direction, well, we're already here. And this one looks a bit different from the ones of Valeria Mirage. Is it more rusted, or... I think this one might be a bit more rusted. Because all of the sort of reruns of the individual minigames from Valeria are kind of... You know, because Valeria is approximating people from the past who probably ended up dying in the meantime. How did this level sufficient? Break the targets, entertainment and safety balance, entertainment, toy cannon, relief. Look familiar, seen it before in the Valorian Mirage, the Croco, can Croco Cannon. Not Mr. Chatillon, Jerry Water Cannon, designer, experts in the field, so he's definitely died. How old is that guy? First guess, connection, guess what we're gonna say next? Making adjustments, people to test it out. Correct, real deal, work with many, no difficulties in cooperating. Express, former naval, unfortunate. Naval Artillery Engineer from the Institute's Armaments Team, Criminally Unemployed Armaments Research. Fiddling with the improved Croco Morph Vortex Space Crocodilian Armored Heavy Naval Battleship Style Recreational Water Blasting Cannon. You know, at least having names that are a mouthful has been some sort of theme. You know what they're doing. Hope so we can get a water park. Naval Artillery Engineer, Unemployed Water Park, Safe Confusion, Career Shift. Choice, Impressive Armada, Naval Cannons, Annihilate in a Battle, which was that the Cataclysm or what? Clockwork Mecca and Hawaii Marmonia, no plans to rebuild it. Large, expensive, heavy, no real use. Someone like me likes to tinker. Contracting is a dead end. That said, it's it's been almost two years since Port Ormos came out, and every NPC there, I swear, talked about sea monsters. We still don't have the Samara Coast. The guys in Petrocore talk about cannons, which to be fair will probably send us to Celestia, but it's just what are we gonna do with that coastline. When are we going to fight sea monsters? When are they going to make more cannons? Better than the wave rod we have. And it's completely... So I say got a wave. I'm happy. It's important. Ticket sales or a piece of life. Not that bad, really. Glad staff full type. Don't need to be consoled at all. I'll talk about sad stuff. Top highly improved cannon. But some people were talking about how they finally gave us a resolution to the mentions in some domains about Fontaine's naval fleet as well as the Croco Cannon stuff, just saying, oh yeah, they all sunk, which is convenient as, you know, the fact that every horse of Mondstadt is on the expedition. The cavalry captain with no horses. 
no longer requires loading, switch between ammunition types, optimizations, target stage designs to make it more challenging. Three days, not tired of it. You should get some sleep. Forget all your problems, lose yourself in the fun, help me spread the word about it, try out the new Krakow cannon, and not talk about unemployment. Why, well, Ryan did work together well, rough patches, same great attitude she does. So, blueprints off by Chatillon, made improvements to the iteration. See if we use Hydro Elemental Ammo for entertainment, consume energy reserves, slow your plunge over time, hitting easy charge balls will also restore it. Water cannon controls under settings in the event UI. Oh, but anyone else here, does anyone else have other thoughts about the Nylon teasers? Settings, order normie, tiny vantage, dual charge balls, easy charge, brouhaha, under stage specifics. Well, you know, I'll figure it out on time. Combo, high combo key to getting a high score, and what do you have to say? Experience a joy of the cannon about your old job before naval artillery, one of the top three engineers, amazing. Only had three, so, oh, ouch, make it the worse. Average, but lucky, no accident avoided the explosion of the Institute, which actually did not seem to kill that many people, if anyone. The gloss came across Chatillon's blueprints, create and spread happiness. So partners, I'm fortunate. Oh, ego. When is her good luck? So lucky, try my best, good things about to happen will be a cinch. Hope it goes well. Don't give up, believes in you. Okay, but it seems that changing the dog options actually influence what she said in response. So if we choose not to be self-aggrandizing, I wonder what. Really, you're fortunate. That's right. Okay, can't rely only on luck. Isn't that easy? Funding bright awareness. So that didn't come up the other time. Can't drop the ball on any. Consideration. Equipment market. Let loose. Everything will get better. Promote the cannon. And... Who is this? Hello? Trying to enter your world. Experience about Chatillon. Met him, how is he? Regrettably, passed along before I was born exactly already. Positive, happy wife, hope and strength. Can't fight enemies, destroy my sorrows, peace is hard won. Picking yourselves up and being happy. The sacrifice of those who have died. Inspired, restarted the Croc Cannon project. Really proud of you. Operate and have fun. And hello, who are you? Hello! You are on stream right now. How are you doing? Dost thou require assistance or resources? Resource provision. <laughs> okay. What's going on? What's going on here? New Viet moment. New Viet moment. Flying around. Get on my level. Get on my level. Yeah, go go ahead. Call Wanderer short. Who's higher up right now? Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have used words that were a bit easier to understand. Yes, I would be happy to help. Would be. Be happy to help. What would you like? Bosses or boss help? Oh, oh, oh. Presumably, oh, they've got the kind of r and &R smiley face. That's cute. I like that. Presumably it would be boss help. I bet it's going to be Thunderman. Oh! Running the, yeah, running the domain. Sure. How many runs? I can do as many as you need. But I would like to know ahead of time. Last time I needed to help someone run Marsha say I did a funny team with Farazan and Jian Yun, if I recall correctly. Just have to say. Back later and around for some time, come back whenever you'd like. Okay, come on, come on. Oh, or are they where did they go? Okay, okay. So they are wanting some help and running the domain. I see, I see. Well, we may not get our answer. But I think the best thing to do in terms of something somewhat self-sufficient, that's the question. So if they're running Hydro, you know what? I could run. I could put Furina and Baiju on there. That would be... Oh, but they're running their Furina. That case, then maybe Baiju and Shinobu. 
I can see that work. Oh, no, 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 no. You can use your Furina. You can use your Furina. I will focus on supporting your Furina and Nuvia. Because Kaza could work, but also, if they presumably don't have a lot of damage built, then... Yeah, Shinobu proccing some Hyper Blooms would probably do me a bit more good. So let's simply just go for it like this. More than happy. Oh, but... Okay, no, they did come in. For a second, I was worried. So... Get on over here. Oh, this connection might be... Leaving a bit to be desired. This is worrisome. So, go for this, and thank you, and oh, well, I should have done this already, shouldn't I? But, we should get a bunch of bloom seeds, lots of hyper blooms to just nearly completely eliminate them, which is quite nice. As long as they keep an application up, should be more than fine, but I, uh -huh. something seems... A little strange here. Yeah, we'll live. So, and another hyper bloom, and uh, really is a question of just how many runs they want. But the shield is not actually protecting me to the grand like, and I should be over here. I should be over here. But it, something seems wrong with my Shinobu artifacts, honestly. It, she might have the wrong weapon on her, but presumably, as long as she's got her Flower of Paradise Lost set, shouldn't be a problem. I guess it's just a matter of not really making use of the domain stuff and the fact that she is sub-DPS, and if if they're running trying to be the main DPS, and yeah, I didn't have artifact issues, but... Oh, but he should be running Deepwood. He should be running Deepwood. Yeah, that was what made the difference. I keep... Forgetting that that Yao Yao said, wait, did I? Wait, no, 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 like this. Oh, but the healing bonus versus, yeah, we'll stick to this. I actually switched around completely when I was switching between the Yao Yao artifacts and the others. So presumably they'll have actually said something. I'll need to get back. But Yao Yao is just a Baiju artifact holder who occasionally uses. The artifacts that Baiju is not currently using. Oh, hi, Coffee. How are you doing? I asked this before, but do you have any thoughts about the Nylon stuff? I, uh, If you've seen the trailer. So let's just see. I really wonder when you... When they're gonna... Oh, honestly, maybe they should switch their stuff around. But do they have good Nuviet artifacts? If they don't have good Furina artifacts, I wonder if they have good Nuviet artifacts. They're interesting. The big thing about it is that all the new characters seem to have some kind of new... I'm doing great. I'm feeling much, much better. I, I'm kind of... I'm on... I'm over the hump in terms of my illness. Thank you for asking. How are you? But the big thing is that all the characters seem to have a movement-oriented ability. And that might be the kind of gimmick, because they'll have a sort of animal aspect to them. Which some people mention is that, oh wait, I used the wrong characters entirely. Well, I... You know, this might not be so bad. Oh, Hajima Ma Mashenji, and that was Piazli. How are you doing? And, mm, right, Sigmund isn't really built, so I guess we're going to be silly with this. Well, actually, the damage contribution on my end is actually maybe a little better, but the question is, what would be the best way to support Fiorina and Nuviat? But, nice to meet you, nice to see you. How are you doing? Always happy to see new people. But, the big thing is that it seems that animal-related movement abilities are probably going to be the gimmick of... Well, you know, why not go for the burst? Won't do all that much damage, but... Probably going to be, quote-unquote, the, the gimmick of Nalan, the same with that Numa and Usia were the gimmick for Fontaine. So the question is just, especially given that we've seen the dragon transformations and other, the other Nolan trail we've got before, I wonder if, more or less, 
they're going to have long durations or maybe even infinite durations so they can actually meaningfully compete with the dragon transformations. Of course, assuming that the dragon transformations themselves are infinite duration, which may not be true in, in and of itself, but in the end, it seems like actually running my own DPS build might be a bit better than running... Oh, but actually, if I ran... I could run Zhao with Farazan. That would probably work quite well. I could see that working. So, they have not given me a solid answer as to how many domain runs they want to do. So presumably it's either until they run out of the resin for the day, or maybe even just get something good, but... I... I'm not going to refuse somebody standing in need of help. So, how much more we got? How much more are we going? Let's go for... Just got to remember to put in the Zhou and the Farazan instead, and that should be great. Okay, switch to that, put in... It! It's been some time since I last used my Zhao, but he is strong. Especially when you run him with Furina, Farzan, that kind of thing. But, I guess it is kind of funny, because not to say too much, but one of the new characters looks to fall into the same kind of catching archetype of sort of blink teleport dash with the ability to go in the air. But he has... Oh, but if he's running the... Is he running Xing Chao? I... Hmm, that's questionable. It's a quite questionable choice. You know, I... If it works for them. If it works for them. Okay. You know, they, they need help. They clearly need help, you know. I shouldn't shame. So, over here and... Said I was really hoping to make use of the Zhao Farazan synergy, but, you know, not everything good can survive in this world, I suppose. But it, I guess the question is, was he just trying to get Hydra Resonance, or... It's the big thing with... Oh, uh, with Zhao and, I mean... With Xing Zhao and Niu Viet is that Niu Viet and Xing Zhao just don't work together, because Niu Viet doesn't use his normals, and the Rain Swords only proc on normals. But this, you know, the Zhao, the Zhao is working just fine. They were... I was doing just fine. <laughs> okay. So I think that worked a bit better to help them out. But I suppose maybe in that case, maybe healing Furina could be good. Or I could just use healing food. It's been five billion years since I actually used food to heal. I may as well actually do it. It wouldn't kill me. Question is then... Question is... Anything else? How are the artifact rolls going? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, please. You know, I... Things could be worse, but an answer would be pleasant. Okay, okay. Hmm... <laughs> Yeah, it... I think we'll definitely get a volcano area. And it was... They mentioned the various tribes, each living in different environments. And especially since the original content beta test map mentioned a volcano with, quote-unquote, an Arabolica fight club. All you needed. I am happy to keep helping if needed. Which, you know, if you remember, Arabalica was the really, really strong Aranara from the part of Aranyaka that was around, not this area, but around over, can't quite see it, it was over in these ruins of Davi, and yeah, over under here, Arabalica fought some ruin enemies. His entire deal was just being a really strong Aranara, which was funny. But a lot of people, when Arabolica showed up in the Samara Archon Samara World Quest, were sort of confused in a funny way about him showing up again after the mention. And I 
the rain looks kind of weird. I feel like it might be a, some kind of graphics card issue. It's having similar issues with this shimmering and Elden Ring, but frankly, it's probably it's probably the rain, isn't it? This is just the effect of the rain on the water. But I, I, I don't know what they're doing. I guess. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. I guess we'll just. Oh well, no, that was all they needed. You know, we. If I was able to help out, I'll take that. But the big thing is that not one is based off of parts of Africa and mostly sub-Saharan Africa and South America. And especially for South America, there are a lot of grasslands that I think they were. Quacomorphs, proof cargo candy can bring. That. You know, there are going to be volcanoes because, well, for one, there are, are volcanoes in South America at least, but. It's kind of like how. Just because Fontaine was the nation of Hydro doesn't mean it was all underwater. Just because. Well, actually, you know. This is mostly land, but it did have Guyon, which I do find it interesting that the Wave Riders were not permanent additions to Guyon. They added some for Lantern Ride a couple years ago, but after Lantern Ride was over, they got rid of them, which actually surprised me. Especially since that was a little bit before they added Ride In Story Quest Part 2, which actually removed the lightning barrier around Inazuma, but it's just... You can't get a you can't get a wave rider from anywhere around here. The entire eastern coast doesn't have one. If you want a wave rider in Wiwa, you've got to take it all the way from Inazuma over there, which is possible, but it's just I guess the big question is whether they'll ever add, add anything in the ocean down here. Because there was a mention of a dragon palace in some early Inazuma leaks that people thought might be underwater in between Wiwa and Inazuma, but probably ended up just being an early version or a misinterpretation of what would end up being in Konamiya. But in the end, it's... So many things change during development. There's really no way to know. Ready? It's bubble ball time, and now that we're done helping out somebody with domains, it's time to 20 points. Firing mode or target ball layout, dual charge, brightly and score high, easy charge. Tiny advantage, easy charge, energy reserve by 10. Dual charge deals damage nearby. You know, I... this should not be a problem. Just need 2,000 points. We'll see what happens. But... The big thing is, is that if it was really all volcanic, it would be hard to make it interesting. Mar the Mara Javari is confirmed to be in Nalan, which, to be fair, Process of Elimination already told us, because it was not going to be in Sneznaya by any means. Firing modes, target ball, less energy, more energy, explosion when hit. Now, oh, interesting. Great new points. Damage, replenished energy reserve, restored, can't exceed like the maximum energy. Protocol will not count towards score. Interesting. Rotate camera and... Oh, that moves quite slowly. Interesting. And then we... So we need to aim banker shots a little? That seemed to have a bit of a... Uh, I... Oh, interesting. And not in a good way. Okay. Well, I... All right. Thanks. So basically we can use it to mop up. Oh, but those ones aren't the explosive ones. And I am simply a fool. Okay. Cool. And, alright. I, let's try that one again. I thought they would all explode because I wasn't paying enough attention. And I got burned. Yeah. I may feel better, but I'm not entirely back at 100%. Which, well, you know, that's life. So. The big thing is that. I did get to see some friends yesterday, because, you know, I somewhat recovered from being sick. And one of them talked about the idea of starting up a modded survival multiplayer server for... That, in theory, they would be fine with me streaming. So that would be quite fun. That could easily end up being very, very fun. We'll see what happens with it. Because the logistics of it would be may be a bit tough because someone would probably need to run it actively, but it's an int yeah, yeah. Some kind of modded thing to do. It's just a number of friends, which could be cool, depending on things. They, specifically, we expressed some interest in doing all the mods 9 or 10, 
As they mentioned 9, but I mentioned that, because I just found it out on a search, that all of the mods 10 is actually, has actually just come out and is in a testing phase. So that could be interesting as something to do. Just see what it's like when it starts up. If it's any good, frankly, because, you know, new stuff is usually a bit clunky too, but... One big thing is that, so is there a, the possibility of a platinum on this one? Croco Cannon Platinum Metal. Is there a hidden platinum metal in, that was two years ago. Spino Blaster, and that's, no, no, no. Past event, and that, Spino Double Blast. Can you get a higher score. Yeah, yeah, it would be a lot of fun. But the big thing is that some of my friends had some objections to the whole st me streaming gameplay with them. Not because of privacy stuff, but just because of scheduling it. But a larger SMP type thing would not be the kind of thing that would require specific people to schedule, which would we agreed would probably make it a bit better for everyone involved because it would just be, you know, I get on at a given time and if other people want to get on, they can or whoever's on at the time, I can... There's no pressure for other people to stay on. To come on at a specific time and stay on as long as I am on, which would be convenient. It would help things out. The big thing is I... <sighs> got that gold medal, but the question is just... Is there a platinum medal, and how much would it be? Honestly, it feels like it might be one th 10,000, maybe. I want to try that one one more time. I'd have to get really, really good at aiming. Big thing is just the travel time of the bullets is a bit more than I might like, and a bit more important than I might like, but big thing is just if I'm faster about it, maybe you honestly need to do it in multiplayer to get it to work. I could see that happening, but I... Mm. So, presumably, more should show up the faster I go, and actually, this is good. This is quite good. And, oh, interesting. I'm banking those shots, so that was a problem, and I... Uh, this is where things get tough, because it's just banking the shots. So, sort of the width of one balloon away. That's where I should aim ahead, for the sake of making sure that they... Well... Maybe a little bit less, actually, once we hit everything at once. And it seems like aiming for a big single, the more dead on you hit them, the better it works, maybe? I'm not entirely sure is the thing. And boom, hit, and boom, and oh, but since there's nothing in the middle, I... They look good. The issue is, is that I'm not going to be rolling for Nilo, I don't think, because... Emily's also coming out that version, and in the interest of getting, you know, as many new characters as possible when they first come out, because that's also when they're going to be most meta-relevant, I don't think I've got the space to really roll for Nilu when Nalan is coming out immediately after, especially since Emily is going to be second half of the patch, which is going to mean that uh, after her banner's over, Nalan is going to be right out. But... And it is kind of funny in, in a sad kind of way, because my Sigwin artifacts, artifacts I'm kind of making for Sigwin, are also really good new artifacts in theory, but... So let's see. Is this a platinum medal? They don't give platinum medals in this one. So all I need to do is get gold. For the sake of feeling... Oh! Oh, they actually change! It's not just small and big, it's horizontal and vertical. For Bruhaha to care to invade them, and that... Ducks 20 points. So that's actually really interesting. That said, I think, from what I heard, you can only choose between. Oh, Kirana? Right, right. Oh, goodness, I forgot. Well, I guess, given that Kirana is going to be free in the event, that's. I'm, I'm going to get that one for free. And the big thing about it is that, since the ones you get from events, you just get for free from playing the event, I don't judge them as much. But I like Kirana's, especially because some people are saying that hers feels kind of like a five star skin. Because they actually get, put a mask on her box form too, which is more effort than is given to most other skins. As a result, because none of the others really change effects other than Deluxe, so technically that makes her sort of on a 5 star level, which is funny. But I've gone a year without rolling a single Kirara, 
And though her constellations would make it even better, she's really good on quick swap T90 teams. And given that I've got a T90 constellation, I'd like to actually try running T90 more often, especially given that the second battle pass bow, this Desert Sun one, is pretty good on him. And I've had him built for a while, it's just there hasn't been a great situation to use him in. So having Kirara would, you know, beyond just, you know, having Kirara finally, a character who's, you know, a fun character, would also just give me the opportunity to use Tinari again. Because that's the thing with a lot of four-star characters, that you oftentimes kind of have to see them in the same context as the five-star characters they're meant to work with. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but... And because that's always the thing, you know, just, you know, do you want your character to be a support or an on-fielder? Because, you know, an on-fielder will work with more team comms, but you're going to see, I mean, a support character will work with more team comms, but you'll get to see an on-fielder a lot more, which, in particular, that's why a lot of discourse over sort of, you know, sort of balance in terms of especially in terms of character gender, in terms of having on-fielders and supports, is very conflicted at times, because, you know, there are people who say, you know, I hope that we get more supports of, you know, quote-unquote, so-and-so's preferred gender, so that, you know, I can have a team that is all, you know, my preferred gender. You know, I, it's not something I mind. I play this game specifically because, you know, it's gotten more or less even balance in terms of cast, or at least more even than you can get in other places. And I, I like that for a number of reasons. But there are people who... And I do find it interesting, and, you know, this gets dangerously close into waiting in the waters of discourse, which is, is like, as I like to call it, the sixth the deadly sin. But it is interesting, because there are a lot of people kind of doom-posting about... There was a somewhat questionable week, or at least a week that doesn't necessarily say all that much, talking about possible characters getting added in the Not One Patch Cycle. Talking about, you know, character model, character weapon, character element. And, and to be fair, it was only characters who would be coming out shortly, or maybe characters who would be in the Archon Quests. But a lot of people made note of the fact that there were only two male characters listed at this point, which were you know, the guy we saw in the trailer, and presumably someone else. Noticeably not Shibalanke, but for better or worse, it is technically possible that Shibalanke might actually end up being a female character, which would be somewhat amusing. The big thing is that people have assumed, myself included, that Shibalanke is going to be a male character because he's named after one of the Mayan hero twins from mythology, who are both male. But, and in the end, I think, like I said, it easily gets toxic talking about this kind of discourse, but it I think it's an important discussion to have, you know, as long as you can make, stay level-headed about it. And the big thing is that, for a significant period of time, for about three whole years after launch, Genshin was the only big-budget Gacha game around, really. It had nearly uncontested market share, which, and it was able to appeal to a generalist audience... But a lot of it, in retrospect, you know, if you want to be, I think, maybe a Doom poster a bit, maybe playing Devil's Advocate, is because just they had no meaningful competition. That if you wanted to play a free-to-play game or a gacha game with high production values, Genshin was the only game in town. But there started being more big-budget, free-to-play, microsams action-heavy games... You know, both intended for, you know, first, because that's how the market works, for better or worse, for male audiences, and then, you know, now, increasingly, ones that are oriented towards, you know, quote-unquote, stereotypically female audiences. Because, you know, there, there are some people saying that stuff like Infinity Niki, which is, com which is coming out relatively soon, it's in its content beta test, might be a Genshin killer in a weird kind of way, even though it's not... Oh my goodness, I hit the bad balloon. In, a, in an interesting sort of way, because it's an unabashed girl game, quote-unquote, for lack of a better term, you know, without 
you know, and not in a derogatory way. It's just a game that unabashedly t targets a female audience. Oh, Infinity Nikki. Or it might be Nikki, but it's basically if... Kind of... And I did hear about a puzzle focus, which if so could be interesting, because in a similar way that the new Zelda game... You know, the one with Zelda is focusing on being more of a puzzle-oriented game than a combat-oriented game. Which, I think... There's there's a part where it feels a bit like playing into stereotypes of, you know, sort of, you know, this is what a quote-unquote girl game has to be. But again, it's just... If it's appealing to, you know, genuine tastes of a demographic in good faith, it's just... There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of, you know... Are you making a gruel game as a quick cash grab or just because, you know, you want to appeal to a different audience and maybe use that as an opportunity to make different kinds of games than you did before? Because that's cool, especially because, you know, especially since, you know, Zelda is fun, but to be totally honest, newer Zelda games especially, you know, they're not really pulse-pounding combat-heavy games. You know, I had a hard time with some of the stuff in Tears of the Kingdom because I specifically rushed the end game as soon as possible because I figured, you know, the hardest challenge I can get in the game ever is going to be rushing the end game as soon as possible. You know, I wanted that, but... You know, I honestly feel to an extent that, you know, a non-combat-focused Zelda game, you know, the one with Zelda as the main character well, at least in my opinion, in my experience, play more to the series of strengths in terms of, you know, the things that I actually still enjoy about it. But, like I said, the big thing is that Infinity Nikki is going to be the latest entry in the Nikki series of games, which I think Infinity Nikki might be the first one getting an actual release outside of China, but a Chinese sort of dress-up type, and I think it has some life simulation element, elements as well game, but it's, you know, it's not a combat-focused game. There's stuff in there, but it's very perfunctory. It's not supposed to be the focus of the game, and, you know, more all the power to them. But I think a big part of it is just that, and I mean this in a totally neutral, descriptive way, that I think partly because Genshin was kind of the only game in town, literally, that a lot of people who didn't necessarily enjoy... Genshin, all of Genshin's gameplay aspects sort of grit their teeth and bared it for some years because they liked the characters or other aspects. And it's just, you know, if a game comes out that appeals more unabashedly to what they like in the game, because it's just, again, Genshin was the only big budget, high production value Gasha game. And it was able to appeal to a broad audience because it was the only thing in town. Ichthyfish, additional points. Ichthyfish. Craig Dreader Punishment. And that, it, it is kind of interesting in that there were some people who watched me a bit, and when Star Rail came out, were sort of, okay, oh, are you going to play Star Rail? And I said, sorry, no. And, you know, they didn't say I'm leaving, but, well, they left. And it's just sort of a question of... <sighs> on the topic of just the gender distribution of characters... Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't play through a lot of Tears of the Kingdom... But I, I liked playing around with the puzzle stuff. It's just that, you know, I ran straight to the end and avoided... I, I want to go back and play more of it. I'm not sure if I'd stream it. But it's funny to think that, you know, I beat the game, but I didn't really play it. Which is silly. Number of weak points in Ichthy Fish. So this is kind of a boss fight one. That's cool. Oh, Croco Cannon's Faded Foe, but oh, if I... Ah, so if you aim for the... Aim for the weak points... There we go, that's good. Oh, but now that it's exposed, we can just... I guess the question is, can we... Oh, and those do deal more damage. Okay, so we should retry this. But... The big thing is, and... I think there's some people doom posting in part because... Generally speaking, the way that Mahalia has done things is sort of front-loading or back-loading characters of a given gender in, within the context of a certain patch cycle, so that people who only roll for male characters or only roll for female characters will quote-unquote get expended and have to maybe drop a bit to get them all in a certain 
amount of time, but it... I think there is... I would not call someone unreasonable for having worries about whether the game might be sort of deliberately, knowingly trying to target maybe a more specifically male audience, which, you know, again, for a number of reasons, I personally would not like that. Not in part because, again, you know, if my audience lost interest in Genshin, I would either have to stop playing. Yeah, exactly. How is it? New v it was Winnie, then Fremine, then Rathesley, and New Vien. And after that, it was just, you know, the, the run was over, so to speak. It was just... They had... Furina, Navia... Sean Yoon, then Arlequino, and so on and so forth. It... You know, it was, first and foremost, a business tactic. But... I guess the big thing is just... Especially since, like I said, there are more unabashed sort of high-budget girl games coming out. And the big one isn't even Infinity Niki. It's Love in Deep Space, which you might have heard of. It could be Fish. Which is... It's not even an open-world game at all. It's, it's a dating sim. But it... Very, very Fortitude State. And I have, you know, seen it brought up as a specific... Not not a competitor in the sense of, you know, they're the same kind of game, but in that... Oh, so this is interesting. This is the first one where I switch between the small one and the wide one. Oh, that's interesting. You know, there were some people basically saying on various discussion places for Genshin, just, you know, I'm going... You know, this game is fun and all, but I'm going to switch gears to a game that suits my taste, even if it's not the same kind of game, even... You know, that's respectable. There are people who like that. There's nothing wrong with wanting a game that caters to you. But I find it interesting to think about, you know, maybe Mahoyo might be deliberately. I hope they aren't, but they might be, you know, switching to just going back to how things were and sort of at launch in Inazuma. Because Sumeru was very, very big and nice as someone who likes having a balanced cast, but it was, to an extent, kind of an anomaly. And I think it is interesting, considering how they just don't put out a lot of characters and also rely decently heavily on Constellations reruns and otherwise to keep up revenue. But it's just... It's still too early to see. I guess once we start getting the second, pa second part of 5.0, which is still a long time off, see how things happen, I guess the big thing is just... If Shubalanke ends up being a female character... I think that would kind of be the nail in the coffin, confirming that, yeah, they're sort of accepting, you know, Love and Deep Space, Infinity Niki, maybe even, you know, Star Rail even, are going to sort of gradually siphon away most of our female player audience. We should focus on keeping the audience that will quote-unquote stay there, which, you know, for a number of reasons, again, just, if my viewer base lost interest in the game, I would have to either, you know, content myself with sort of shrinking, changing viewer base, stop playing the game, play entirely off stream, which, you know, it's a fun game, but it takes a lot of upkeep, and if I couldn't really stream it with people watching it anymore, I would feel some motivation to just switch gears, but in the end, it is probably too early to just call it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no sense in just doom posting and thinking, oh, it's going to be so bad, it's going to be so bad, until something like that actually happens. So the big ones do deal more damage, too. But I guess, beyond all that, the important thing, first and foremost, is going to be, are they going to be fun characters to play? Is the plot going to be good? Will we get good music, good fights? You know, in the end, it's just... From a pure gameplay perspective, it does look fun. And before just Doom posting a bunch, I should focus on stuff like that. Summon Ichthy Fish. And one... Ooh, these ones are kind of tough. Oh, just Genshin, whether or not Lon is going to be enjoyable. And what is interesting is that this one fights a bit like the local legend, Blubber Beast. Yeah. It's formation breaking. Apply target identification. But, survey analysis tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still excited. Moving target destruction. We're getting a new new region with a new style of music, new characters, new plot, two new weekly bosses, which are always fun fight, fire control, adjustment. It is interesting, though, how 
Sick Trajectory Forum. Emily is going to use Arlokino's boss materials. We know that from League's Focal Point Breakthrough Theorem. It is interesting in light of that complex environment adaptations. And we got the Croco Cannon. I don't know. It's just a blueprint. <sighs> How Corinne, Sigwin, and Sethos, none of them actually used Arlokino's mats, despite being a patch right after them. And Sethos even used Skara's materials, which is kind of crazy to think about. Actually, I want to see some of those descriptions, but we did get all those, which level all time. Also, again, like I mentioned, it is kind of crazy how Emily is going to be second half of the patch, despite being the only new five-star character, which is, again, probably to push Nilu a bit, given that she is the one with the costume, Chuck Ball Lao, Dual Charge, Easy Charge, I'm probably score highly, avoid the Brujaha Balls, Horizontal Vertical Salvos, Movements, right firing button timing, destroy multiple targets at once, vertical lines, block off movement range, defeat them in one fell swoop. More energy and overdrives, explosions, sort of prejudice, right firing mode, precise aiming points, steal redis damage, just blubber ball, strike its weak point, stun endurance, recovery, distort and quickly prevent it from happening. Most of the ixth fish won't take any damage, destroy it siftily, nowhere for it to run. But yeah, I the funniest thing I love. Kaves, I were you around for Academia Extravaganza? Because it was really cool how much story they gave Kave in that one, but it's also crazy in less of a good way how all of that is locked behind that limited time event. He he got the Albedo treatment, and I don't mean that in a good way. Well, to be fair, Albedo got that twice, but it that was. Honestly, the conclusion of that event was very emotional in a good way in that. I loved Dia's story quest. That one brought me to tears. Just, you know, with the whole thing where her father, she hated him, thought he was an awful guy, but it turned out in the end, you know, there was a bit of posthumous reconciliation. That was very emotional for me. They've, they've tried that a number of times since. With, you know, a quote-unquote bad person ending up being good. And it's just... It worked well the first time and decently the other times. But it's just... There's only so much you can deploy one tactic in your playbook before people just recognize it and just think, Okay, this is what you're doing. Okay, alright. But... Uh, as I was saying, the Dia story quest was really good. But the Academic Extravaganza one came out around the same time. And the whole stuff with Kave was interesting too, especially since I knew ahead of time how to get quote unquote the right ending there, or the good ending, where All Hytham talks about sort of his opinion on Kave. And it it was a similar kind of thing, but different in that you know, you never really think no one ever really, really thought of All Hytham as a bad guy, just sort of blunt and maybe a little selfish, but it was very interesting to see that dialogue that confirmed, you know, that he cares about Kave in his own way, even if he's... Yeah, because he can choose to tell Kave about... I think what Nahida tells you or not, if I recall correctly. But the big thing is that it... Some of the dialogue, which unfortunately was missable, I think, if you chose the wrong option, or just... Well, quote-unquote wrong option, just a different option, or, you know, also just didn't do the event, but it... It was nice seeing how... You know, Alhytham cared about Kave in his own way, despite being kind of a blunt, maybe, bit antisocial of a person, but just, you know, it, when done well, it do, it is nice to see, to get a revelation of a character or a person being, you know, better than you thought they were, but like I said, it's not the kind of thing that can get overused without it just having its effect blunted, but... As you can probably see, I'm trying to get the friendship up for Sethos and Corrind right now. I am grinding experience books in advance for the sake of... Sorry, just muted for a cough. For Emily next patch, I think I'll actually be trying to level Lila next patch as well. Guess it's sort of... The pronunciation in-game is Layla. But it's kind of like the whole Candace Kandake thing in that in Arabic, I believe it's more like Lila, so it's sort of, it's funky. But I've got about as 
what I need for one character, but the reason I want to level up Leila slash Lila is that Cryo is going to be one of the elements in Imaginarium Theater next cycle, because this current cycle is going to continue until the first couple weeks of the next, next patch cycle, so I'm going to wait until that to do them, because, you know, if I want to hit the 30-hour benchmark for the stream event, better have more things that are actually interesting to watch instead of having to just poke around and do more dailies on different days. Especially since that would kind of bore me too. But, oh, but also if I... Mm, so who's the Hadron? Because the big thing is that I can break down the crab more quickly if I... Okay, and dodge out of the way of that. I can swirl Hydro from Wanderer. But, as I was saying, it would be nice to have a shielder available for that. It is interesting that they're already apparently trying to figure out some tweaks to the mode, because there have been a number of complaints, even from people who have enjoyed it. I do I do find it a good... There's a good deal of cuteness in the fact that Sigwin uses... Her burst is very similar to Nuviet's charge. I like that. Because it... It... I forget what other... Because Bennett and Kai's normals are very similar, but that almost certainly means nothing. But Sigwin's burst being like Nuviet's charge is definitely at least in part meant to reflect, you know, the relationship that Nuviet has as sort of the collective father of all the Melusines. And that is quite cute. So then let's... Oh, uh, that will not quite work. So... Go over here, but I... Mm, got that nuke off, but... Big thing is, if I play my cards correctly, I can line myself up right to hit both of them at once. The issue is, of course, that it is interesting how weirdly high Corrin's normal damage is, and it's mostly just because you really have to build her attack, but the big thing is that if you line her up right, she can hit both of these guys at once. The issue is, is that hitting them both at once requires a bit of luck in regards to positioning. And you can't really move around while her e-skill stances up, otherwise you're going to be losing out on more shots and thrusts. It's kind of silly. But after I get done with my Leyline stuff, since I did the event, and I guess I could go in and get a 30 more seconds of chat time via going in to craft the cannon blueprint I got, but... It's, you know, there's only so much I can do without scraping at the bottom of the barrel and not respecting other people's time as well. So after I do this in craft, I guess the question is, are there any other topics of conversation that come to mind? I would be more than happy to chat about things like Notlon or, I don't know, video game demographics. But it is interesting because... In the end, I do have a big enough backlog that even if Genshin changed its target audience enough that I would feel some motivation to stop streaming it or stream it less or something like that, I'd still have a lot of games to play, like New Zelda coming out, the Sonic Generations remake with a whole Shadow campaign, which is exciting for me for a number of reasons. One, I like Shadow the Hedgehog. Two, I never played the original Generations because I never had a way to do it. Well, I actually did play... Generations on 3DS, which is an entirely different game, and not a bad one, just a different game entirely. But I... Oh, and I didn't get the charge. That sucks. Come on, come on, we should. Dash over that. That probably would have gone under me, though. But, as I was saying... As I was... Oh, but right, I need to craft it. Actually, though, I have never gotten this far into the... Way ones on this side, and I... Oh, but after this one, it just sends you back over here, right? So I have seen the entire cycle of Samara Ley Lines. It's interesting. But... Also, that new Mario & Luigi game, which, if I play that one, I would also feel pressure to go back and play the other ones, too. Because I played Dream Team, but it was when I was a lot younger. So I had to use the sort of assist mode to beat the final boss. So I think it could be cool to play it again, just, you know, see how much better I've gotten. I... It's interesting to think, because among other... Oh, Corrin's the only character who can actually chop wood right now, because got 
two bows and a catalyst. Maybe we might get something more soon. The big thing is that Euphotable should be... Euphotable should be wrapping up Demon Slayer relatively soon. I do find it interesting because a lot of people are kind of souring on Euphotable's style. I I watched their two fate shows and it is really funny because Euphotable actu Uofotable actually came into existence specifically to adopt Nasuverse that is fate and things that aren't fate made by the same creator works because they started out making the Kara no Kyokai movies which are really 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 good movies and what I find very very interesting is that Nasuverse adaptations anime wise can end up oftentimes being very different than the originals, because the novels and visual novels that they start out as rely very heavily on internal monologue. And that can be very, very good or bad in terms of adaptations, because sometimes the internal monologue is kind of stupid. There, There's a bit of silliness in the internal monologue, and for example, the original Fate Zero Light novels, that is not conveyed at all in the Fate Zero anime, because there's no internal monologue there. So, for example, there are a lot of people who like the main characters, this sort of grizzled, wizard, mercenary type of guy, but the narrative in the light novel kind of deliberately makes them seem a little absurd, which isn't intended to make him unsympathetic. If anything, arguably makes him more unsympathetic because he had a bad childhood and became an incredibly stunted person with a naive view of the world as a result. You know, in the end, it... The show also shows how his wish, which is basically to create a peaceful world through utilitarian means, literally, you know, killing the few to save the many. That's how they present it is, you know, a very silly idea that just leads to more and more killing, but it, the entire point which some people miss, well, for the, oftentimes for the sake of being contrarian hater is that, you know, he saw his parents die in front of him. He had to kill his own father because of basically the wizard cops and it, you know, he had a traumatic upbringing and it gave him a horrible, you know, a very twisted and a tragic way sense of life. He tried to be a hero, but he grew up as, you know, he was, I think telling him too traumatized to do it is a little insensitive and maybe a bit wrong, but also, and I'm talking too much about fate right now, but, you know, given that you, Genshin anime will be made by Euphotable, which again was made for fate stuff, you know, and then you go on to the original Fate visual novel and its anime adaptations, which Fate Zero is very tragic, but the entire point is that it's a tragic narrative that gets resolved in the work it was a prequel to that has, you know, a more life-affirming message where it's sort of, the message is, you know, even if being a quote-unquote hero is a naive idea, you know, striving for things that are kind of ridiculous for the sake of your ideals is kind of what leads to good things happening, what makes a life worth a living. It's, you know, a very life-affirming message, and that's the whole point, but... In particular, in regards to Karo no Kyokai, or as it was known in English localization, oh, I still need to watch the final few movies. It... It was originally a light novel series, and it focuses on the relationship between Kokuto Mikia and... Ryogishiki, who are this very, you know, so normal he's weird kind of Japanese guy, and a Japanese, and it's very, very interesting because Shiki's whole deal is that, you know, he, she, they have a split personality that was sort of supernaturally imposed on them, you know, later her because, you know, Shiki's male personality dies after... Shiki gets hit by a car, if I recall co correctly. It's, it's been a while since I watched it. Basically, something happens. There's some accident. Shiki has a nervous break, and Shiki's male personality dies, and Shiki is left with the female personality. But it's not just a convenient thing, because in the novel, Miki explicitly says, you know, I don't care if it's male Shiki or female Shiki. I just like Shiki. So, you know, there, there you go. You go, Mikia. But the big thing is that the novels originally, which were originally published on the internet in the late 90s, had Mikia as the, the viewpoint character. So it's a lot easier to see, though I think... it There's a big difference between a self-insert character and a relatable character, in that... 
And in the end, with enough effort, you can self-insert with any kind of character if you try hard enough and want hard enough too. But the big thing about it is that uh, a lot of... And I think a lot of it is also just... The big thing is that the main guy of fate, Emiya Shiro, his personality is also, like his adoptive father, all about being traumatized. His entire backstory is that, you know, his family died in a massive fire, his adoptive father saved him, and he has an incredibly weak sense of self, incredibly self-sacrificing and self-efficing, because he has incredible survivor's guilt from the experience. You know, feels bad about being the one who survived and was saved when so many other people died. And it... Part of why people think he's kind of a bland self-insert character is because... Again, the anime adaptations of Fate Stay Night lack the internal monologue to its detriment. What For Fate Zero, it's not necessarily a benefit, but just not necessarily bad or good. Because the internal monologue just changes the framing. You know, the work can work fine without the framing, unlike the visual novel, which again, you know, was a, it was a, I think it's hard to put into words why it needs a bit more contextualization, but I think a lot of it is just that Shiro can seem weak or like an idiot without the context of him having survivor's guilt. You know, there are a lot of male fans of fate, you know, especially since it is, you know, just for, vibe, for better or worse, a very male oriented franchise have a lot of respect for female fate fans because they have to really tough it out but it there are a lot of people who love him as a character and relate to him a little but i think that doesn't make him a self-insert and it doesn't make him a bad character because there's a lot about him that's you know it's very aspirational because you know when he you know with the help of you know opening up to people becomes a mentally healthier person you know he can still self-sacrifice but it's not because he hates himself, but because he loves other people. He's still a hero, he's just a more complete person. And it... I think... You know, there's still elements of him being sort of a normal kind of guy, but a lot of that is par for the course in anything that's sort of in an urban setting. But... But like I was saying before in Karno Kyokai, with Karno Kyokai... Mikio is the viewpoint character in the novel, so it was a lot easier to see it as just, you know, this is sort of a weird sort of, you know, girlfriend with a knife, wish fulfillment fantasy. Which, again, I think is kind of disingenuous for a number of reasons. But, I mean, it's a legitimate criticism, especially because, you know, in the end, I think, there are a lot of people who beat around the bush. Because they feel weird about just saying, you know, this work was intended for an audience that isn't really me, and, you know, good for them, I'm glad people like it but it's not for me. You know, that's not to say it's bad, it's just not for me. And I think it takes a lot of self-perception and maturity to say something like that, to say, this is good, but it's not for me. Just because it's not for me does not mean it's bad. You know, I never really noticed it until now, but their hats, they got this flower thing in the middle. I like that. That's funny. Should make that canon. Big thing is, the movies... The, the movie adaptations, which have really good music on them, too. They have a lot of... It was Kajira Yuki who made them. Made the music for it with the help of a sort of female trio, I believe, with really, really nice harmony. They did really well with harmony there, called Kalafina. Kajira has made some other things, too. I forget. Just look up what Kajira has made. Kajira. She makes stuff for Demon Slayer. Let me see. Actually, she did SAO, she did Madoka Magica, and then, then she did Pandora Hearts, which you may or may not know. I have a friend who's a big... No, she did do Demon Slayer. She did do Demon Slayer. She did Demon Slayer 2. So she just did a bunch of stuff for UFO Duel. But it... Basically, given that the movie is from a sort of third-person viewpoint, doesn't have a any kind of omniscient narrator or a single viewpoint character, it's a lot more even-handed. It's a lot harder to say, and I think, again, it is a bit disingenuous, even from the viewpoint of the original novels, to say, you know, this is a male wish fulfillment fantasy, but, you know, the movies focus a lot more on Shiki and his, her, their perspective as 
as a result of just the trappings of a movie, how you have to make a movie. And as a result, it was it was pretty cool. There's a bit of weirdness in it, frankly. It's not for everyone. Some things I just sort of, you know, sort of say, hmm, about, but... It was still very, very cool. And But the big thing about UFO to pull is that, and this is where it all comes full circle, is that there are a lot of people who, with the later Fate works they did, in particular the Heaven's Field trilogy movies, which I watch and enjoyed, but I agree with a bit of the criticism, though the music, the Kajira music was so, so good, though. The way it synced up with the fights and the beats of the story was just incredible. The big thing is, oh, they also got, they got Aimer, Aimer, how you pronounce it, to do, she did the vocal tracks, and that was really, really good, too. She did some really good songs for that, but she, the big thing is that, especially people watching Demon Slayer, just because, you know, it's a lot less niche, a lot more popular, have criticisms of a UFO, UFO, UFO style in that it's very, very busy. There are a lot of effects, and people make a cri the criticism of, oh, you know, this is not something you're supposed to watch. They're baiting people to clip it, put it on Twitter for 30 seconds or so. It looks better in a vacuum than it does moving on screen, which I think, it's a bit disingenuous. I use that word way too much. The big thing is that there is something to be said about something being too visually busy to be all that readable. There's a guy named Scott McLeod who wrote a book called Understanding Comics, which one of the points he makes is that, you know, with an overly complicated design, if something is too visually busy, it's, it distracts from itself. It makes it harder to focus on what's actually going on, on the actual content of the work. And in the end, I think a lot of it was just because, you know, I like fate. I knew what was going on. I was paying attention to see what specifically happened. But I didn't have that much of a problem with the movies. But something I can kind of sympathize with that in that vein is that... And, you know, some of it was just sour grapes about, you know, I don't have a PS5. I didn't want to buy one. Didn't have anyone I could borrow one from. But, you know, how I played the PS3 version of Demon's Souls instead of the PS5 version of Demon's Souls. That... The PS5 deep version of Demon's Souls was honestly kind of simultaneously too pretty and too ugly. In that a lot of it just looked kind of gross, but it was also just incredibly visually busy. In a way that when I would see footage every now and then, I would think, you know, maybe this honestly might kind of distract me from the actual experience of playing it. And PS3 Demon's Souls was grungy for sure, but it was, you know, it was stylized, it was charming. And honestly, the boringness contributed a bit to the deliberately dreamy feel of the game, which I appreciated. Though, again, some of it is definitely still sour grapes. I need that level of self-awareness. But just... <sighs> also, on the topic of it also being too ugly, a lot of things like, for example, the Vanguard Demon at the start were made very sort of gross-looking in the remake instead of a sort of ugly cute in the original. Which, one thing that From Software has said is, their, is part of their design philosophy is that they like to have a sense of elegance in everything. They never want to make anything that's just gross or just ugly. They do something like that, it's for deliberate thematic reasons. And in important designs, they like to convey what they call a sense of elegance. So, for example, the gaping dragon in Dark Souls 1 is this horrible, messed up monstrosity of a dragon. It's bent over backwards, and its ribcage is turned into basically a giant jaw because of the dragons just basically being corrupted after their fall from grace. But it's... And it was specifically in response to looking at designs of the dragon that he elaborated this philosophy of sort of elegance that, you know, this, it didn't originally look like a fallen elegant creature just looked like something messed up and disgusting. And he said, you know, you know, you need a hint of what this creature originally was, of its original majesty in this design, even though it's supposed to be a little gross, a little freaky. But it's not just gross. It's not just freaky. But basically, you know, back... And now things are really going to come to a close. Now I'm really going to say what I was originally saying, which is that the fact that UFO Audible just goes out in the wazoo with effects is really good at making complicated designs. It might actually be to their benefit in the Genshin anime because you know, Genshin has very complicated character designs. When you can make game character models without having to worry about rendering everything, you know, drawing every individual frame, you can go out you can just afford to put a lot of details, do as asymmetry, that kind of thing. Because Wander is a really cool design, but unless you did some level of simplification, it would be a nightmare to animate. To draw every single part of a design, every single, every single frame, that is not happening. And frankly, I feel that if anyone wanted to do it and, and was able to do it, it would be UFOtable. 
But the big thing is this Demon Slayer is coming to a close. I think we'll probably get something about it soon. There have been notions of not letting trailers out soon, and I think it might be possible for them to... Well, that, that said, the Arlecchino short was made by an in-house production studio for that kind of thing. And honestly, that raised the question of whether they might have switched gears from doing something with UFO to doing something in-house. Because, you know, fewer costs, more creative control, that kind of thing. But if it's still with UFO I think we should get some news on it relatively soon because with Demon Slayer being over, the next project, the next big project should be somewhere on the horizon. That's my take. But, in the end, it... I guess the big thing is, when we get something, I hope it is something like the animated shorts we've already gotten, which is to say, shorts exploring background lore that would only be hinted at in-game otherwise, getting to see more specific depictions of referred to events. You know, stuff like the backstory of people like the Kitsune Saigu, like Takamine, Hibiki from Inazuma, because the backstory of Inazuma in particular has a lot of mentioned characters, reference to presumably emotional meetings, partings, and deaths, that we only see in literal artifact and item descriptions, maybe sometimes referred to in events. And I think that would be really, really good fodder for animated adaptation. Because George R. R. Martin has also mentioned things about an Elden Ring movie or TV series. And when I saw that, I thought the same thing. Just, you know, for one, the game would not adapt well. Most Souls games, and Elden Ring is a little less like this, but it's still a lot like it. The player character is kind of a murder janitor coming in after all the meaningful events have happened, happened cleaning up by killing off all the remaining bad guys and slightly less bad guys of the setting. You know, everything in the setting, such as, you know, deaths, assassinations, wars, happen before the player character steps on the scene. And the main quote-unquote plot of the game just wouldn't be all that interesting to adapt, and it would be redundant, superfluous for people who have played it already. To make something that, one, wouldn't be superfluous, two, really appeal to, especially to people who have already played the game, three, get people who haven't played the game to maybe play it after watching it, the best thing to do would be to adapt lore events that we don't see that happen off screen before, during, or maybe even after the game itself to pique people's interest from either side of the aisle. And that would be an adaptation with a real reason to exist. Because part of the reason that a lot of people look down, myself included, on a lot of Netflix adaptations of shows is that they exist in part because of, quite frankly, profound contempt for... In the case of, say, Netflix adaptations of anime, profound contempt for animation as a medium. In most cases, I haven't watched, I haven't watched it, but I've heard a lot of good things about the One Piece adaptation, in part because it does take some liberties, that it tries to not just be a retraw for people who say, ew, animated stuff, and just refuse to watch the original in principle because of that, but try to show, maybe change around some events, for better or for worse, but just be different in a way that gives it its own meaning to exist as a work. But... If, the, if an Elder Ring show or a Genshin anime were to just adapt the events of the game, it would... Even if it wasn't made out of contempt for the original work, it would just be, okay, I've played the game, why do I need to watch this? It won't give me any new information, and it won't be all that interesting. I've seen this, I've played this already, I've experienced it, on a level of personal involvement and participation that a TV show, a movie just fundamentally can't match, for better or worse, that, you know, games tend to have more bare-bone plots because the strengths of games are in character participation and the emotions that can convey. But the level of specificity, of organization, of planning that you can get with another kind of work those are the strengths of movies, the strengths of books, of TV shows. And to make a show out of another work, and to dis disregard the strengths of the original medium, the medium it's being adapted into, it's, it's stupid and lazy. But yeah, the Archon War for sure. It's... Something like the final parting of Zhongli and Guizhong. Just... Maybe... The big thing is that it would also give... 
the opportunity to frankly explain a lot more things that seem kind of confusing. Maybe even just the specific origin of the Raiden sisters, frankly. Because the only thing we really know about them is that they're quote-unquote embodied lightning, which can mean a lot of things. It would be really, really funny if Raiden ended up actually being the Electro Sovereign. Because there are some people who talk about the idea of the Electro Sovereign being in Natlan, which could connect to the Thunder Soother artifact lore, which as of now we don't know anything about where it refers to, and Notlon kind of seems to be the one place it could be in due to mention of the Sea of Flames and just process of elimination. It was really, really cool to me when it turned out that Thundering Fury lore was all about Surumi Island. Because I'd read a bit of the Thundering Fury lore well, before Inazuma came out. Because again, I started... But you started playing around Yule at release, didn't you? I think? I know I mentioned that before about myself, but... Big thing is, a big thing is that... There are people saying that the Electro Sovereign might be in Malon because of the idea of Thunder being... Right, okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. But... Because Thunder Soother mentions a Sea of Flames as well as some sort of lightning to soothe. Then it might refer to the presence of an Electro Sovereign in Malon for some reason. But there's also just the fact that there is still something sealed under Tadarasuna that we know nothing about. We Again, we know nothing about the nature of the Electro Sovereign. So there's still a number of possibilities. I don't think it'll end up being A or her sister, but it would be really, really funny if it was. We'll see what happens. I guess the big question is just, given that we have new yet playable, I still have to hold out some level of hope for playable Azda, playable Opap, especially if the sort of big, beefy male model, which was hinted at being for Capitano, Varka, Piro ends up actually being in game, which frankly I think it probably will be. I think that that could be a good basis for a sort of humanoid Azda, but we'll see what happens. I just I want them to give us more characters who are interesting and fun to play as. You know, I I roll for everybody no matter who it is, so I'm gonna get them <laughs> pretty much no matter what. So I just hope they're fun to play. But yeah, I think I think we both agree that. Any adaptation should focus at least partly on things that we don't already see, so that it's not superfluous, it doesn't carry some level of pointless disrespect for the game as a medium of storytelling, and also just is more interesting than it otherwise would be. But I think I did my dailies, I did the event, I actually, no I didn't craft the thing. Yeah, so unless there's anything else on your mind at the moment, and of course... If I'm off and you want to mention something, you can always bring it up in the server if you like. But otherwise, I think this is going to be it for tonight, especially since I'll be doing a... I think I actually got to help my dad do a bit of renovation on the house tomorrow morning before I do a bit of a Dokapon marathon setting tomorrow to hopefully finish it off with Jack and Dom and then figure out something else. Because after that's done, that might be when the Minecraft SMP mod it starts up, but also... Will be fair if it wouldn't be if it wouldn't be a structure and I could weave other things in. But I also have a friend back from college, an underclassman who wanted to try playing Dragon's Dogma on the line with me, which could be something interesting to do as well. Okay, and then Spider Crocodile left behind my Chatillon. More optimizations and more fun. Can you promote it? Happiness brings more and more people. Next time you meet, see your, her very own Croco Cannon themed water park. Okay, thank you, Yoimiya. So in that case, I'll just go back to. Fontaine and log out. I That lasted a bit longer than I thought it would, but not in a bad way. We got to help someone out running domains and also have a nice long chat about various aspects of media. So hopefully I will see you tomorrow. If I don't, then next time and have a good night, presumably, or good afternoon. Have a good time. Sound